Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, haven't done a video in a little while now. Uh, been kind of a long weekend, so I thought, let me just kind of take a minute, take a deep breath, just to get back to the VC, post a quick video, since I haven't done one in a while. Just kind of say what's up to you guys and uh, share what's been going on. Um, basically what I'm going to share today is some VCLT, some recent finds, both vinyl and CDs and then uh, what I've been spinning I mean so kind of kind of in a nutshell uh, that's what I want to share today so I just kind of actually dive right into it and let me start off with uh, let me show actually what I'll do is I'll show new vinyl first new CDs then what I've been spinning so let's do it in that order so new vinyl I'm gonna start off here with uh, VCLT actually and this actually came from Sid um, Everybody here, you guys know Sid. She sent me this. Uh, light's gonna be bad going this way. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Hope it makes a difference. But yeah, I I won her contest actually, and she sent this over to me. And of course, you guys know Sid's taste in music, which is off the charts. It just always amazes me. Uh, I don't remember exactly how old Sid is. Uh, but I know like her music knowledge just seems like she's 90 and that's always something that's completely floored me about her. Uh, but it's, it's also awesome to me to see you know, younger people that are actually into just not everything that's being spun on Top 40 radio and Sid is definitely not that. Her, her knowledge of music just absolutely impresses the heck out of me every time I watch her videos. And uh, she sent this over to me as part of the winnings from her contest, which is television personalities. I believe one of her, if not her favorite band, I know she talks very highly about them all the time, and I think you said this is one of your favorite albums by them, but it was a nice 180 gram pressing here, and uh, I've listened to it once all the way through, but I can definitely tell it's one of those albums that you have to kind of spin a, a couple of times to really pick up on all the nuances in it, but uh, so far, I mean, I've definitely dug it at what I've heard from it, so thank you very much, Sid. This is actually the first television album in my collection. I mean, I have a few burnt C CDs, but I don't have any actual CDs or vinyl, so this is my first. And there's the uh, note that you wrote me, of course, which is really nice. I always keep that with my BCLT that comes through. So, thank you very much, Sid. I really appreciate that, and I'm looking to, you know, get deeper and deeper into that, that album. Very cool. Uh, second BCLT, let me kind of go ahead and do that while I'm talking about BCLT, and then I'll get back to the the new vinyl finds. Uh, this was actually from Adam. You know, Adam Lee. Everyone knows Adam, my one of my one of my '80s brothers from another mother. I have like four of them here in the BC, <laughs> between him and LJ and Billy Crayoni and on and on, DJ Thunder and so forth. But uh, yeah, he showed this in a video that he had found this, and uh, and I just sent him a message and I was like, hey, you know, if you're ever interested in trading or want anything for that, I'm you know I'm collecting that stuff now so I would you know love to do a trade and like almost before I could even get something out he's like I'll send it to you I'll you know and he said I'm like well, no wait wait a minute dude it's just you know, let's let me give you something for it and and like the more I kept saying I wanted to give him the more he kept saying no 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 so uh finally he allowed me to send him a couple of little things and I mean little compared to what he he shared with me and uh I mean I just Again, it's just that, that whole VC thing taking place. And Adam, I can't thank you enough, man, because uh, this is something that I, I really wanted. It's something I'm really building in my collection right now. So what he sent over to me was this right here, which is the Rush box set, the studio albums, 1989 to 2007. Which, uh, I mean, you guys have been watching my videos lately know I've really been getting into collecting box sets recently. And Rush is one that I want to get. Uh, sector 1, 2, 3. Uh, there's three bo box sets, but I think they call sectors. Sectors 1, 2, 3, and then this is kind of the fourth box set, which really covers all of their studio albums. So uh, it was really, really awesome getting that. And again, like I said, he was dang near forcing it in my laps. He wouldn't let me give him almost anything for it. But at the very end, like I said, he did allow me to send him over a couple of CDs, and he sent this right out to me, and man, I cannot thank you enough. Really, really appreciate it. Actually, uh, last night or night before last, I spun Presto, and I also listened to Counterparts, and it's just really, really awesome stuff, man. 
So Adam, thank you so much for the addition to the, the box set collection. Really appreciate it. Also, thank you for the two burnt CDs that you sent over, which of course were 80 mixes. I mean, it's Adam, guys. <laughs> it's uh, some cool 80 mixes. And I know you really made those for me, even before I read your note, because I looked at the tracks on there, and I knew those were made specifically for me because there were songs on there and groups on there that I know there is no way you put this stuff on just random 80s mix CDs that you send out to you know whomever in the VC I was like you know that was made by someone who really really knew me because he put some bands on there that nobody else has mentioned that are some of my favorites like ever so again so thanks for taking the special time to make that 80s mix those two 80s mixes for me as well my boy Adam um, okay so let me kind of jump now just into some uh, recent finds this is probably over the past two or three weeks. Again, I haven't been buying a ton of vinyl lately. Uh, or maybe I should be a little more picky on what I'm buying. Just really seeking out specific stuff that I want. But one here, Lou Donaldson. This is Alligator Boogaloo. And again, Lou is an artist I've discovered over the past year and a half or so. I probably have like four or five pieces of his stuff now. But I got this for like five dollars, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, Lou is, again, I've always described him as, most of you know who Austin Powers is. You know the type of music you hear in Austin, Austin Powers, that 60s funk, funk slash psychedelic type stuff, with all you know, the bright colors, you know, just the whole Austin Powers thing. Take that same feel and just apply it to jazz, and that is exactly what Lou Donaldson is. I mean, it would never shock me to hear some of his stuff in an Austin Powers movie. And uh, his album covers kind of capture that too, as you can see. It's very, just very kind of six dancey, psyche, funky type of jazz. So definitely an, an artist that I dig quite a bit. I also picked up this nice addition to my Ornette Coleman collection for only eleven dollars too online, which is really nice. Brand new copy, 180 gram pressing. This is Ornette Coleman. Tomorrow is the question. And just really cool to have on vinyl. I mean, I had the CD for quite some time, but to find a nice, perfect mint condition piece on vinyl is really cool. Because next to John Coltrane, or Ned Coleman is probably my favorite jazz artist, so it's nice to kind of complete his collection, or getting closer to completing his collection. Here's another one that I picked up as well, and this is the Ornette Coleman Trio at the Golden Circle, Stockholm. There's two volumes of this. There's a volume one and a volume two. This is volume one. This is a reissue, and I think it's a uh, 70, 75 year reissue with Blue Note. They have kind of that new sticker. It's amazing how Blue Note just takes the most simple things and makes it so dang cool with that uh, 75 Blue Note reissue sticker. And the cool thing about this album. Or I should say with these reissues that they're doing on the 75 year reissue, so it's like this, is that they're putting different kind of inserts in now. Because typically, you know, I buy a lot of Blue Note reissues and they almost always come with a plain white insert. But I noticed this time on the 75 year Blue Note reissues, it comes with this nice, it's kind of colored, obviously. Uh, insert. Then I guess it just has a number of the albums, maybe the ones they're reissuing for the 75 years of Blue Note. So you can see a lot of different artists there. So really cool stuff. I, I don't know, just little things like that I think make a big difference. It was nice to open this up and not see just a plain white paper insert this time. So again, awesome stuff. Ornette Coleman. Great addition to the collection there. Another nice addition. This is Tycho, a band you've heard me talk about probably in the last month or so when I picked up their first album. Or, I'm sorry, their, their most recent album. This is their first album, which is uh, Past is Prolonged. Kind of, you know, just a post-rock type thing on the lighter side. You know, nothing heavy at all. More like a soothing, you know, type of thing. More, really more kind of laid back. Uh, really nice 2LP set. That's one of the records there. I won't necessarily pull out the other one. But then it does also have a very nice, these very nice colorful inserts as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, 
yeah so again it's just real definitely a, a very feely feely type of album because again it's kind of a post rock just you just kind of sit back and just like listen to it and just take in the feel of the album because there's no lyrics or anything uh, but really really cool stuff now this is their very first album which from what I understand they released it before and they came back and re-released it I guess they put some new tracks on or something like that and so that's what this ended up being which is their first album so I don't know if I showed this or not but this is their second album which I also got I might have shown this a video or two ago but anyway this is their second album, which is Dive, which is, again, nice 2 LP set, same type of post-rock stuff, which is really cool. And then their third and most recent album, this is the one I discovered on iTunes just a few few weeks ago, maybe about yeah, maybe, yeah, a month or two ago, I guess, um, and I was just really kind of floored by it. And it's, uh, again, it's just tight over here. I think, it's, is this a weight? Is that what it's called? Yeah. So I forgot the title, actually. So, and the exact same thing. Now, in my opinion, if you're not familiar with this band, this is the album that I would recommend starting with, just from listening to the three. Uh, you can definitely hear their sound and their feel in those first two albums. This seems to be the one where they perfected it the most to me. So, if you haven't heard, heard of them before, this would be the one I would recommend starting with. Now, I know I have shown this one before, but I thought, let me just kind of show that one have the other two out there as well so now let me also show new CDs before I show what I've been spinning and see what I've been spinning uh, what's playing in the background is this right here which those of you that like this band definitely recognize that cover system of a down and this actually came out of one of the new box sets that I got, which is System of a Down. It's a five album box set. Basically, it's those five albums right there. It's what comes in it. So just to kind of show it to you really quick here. So you saw the self-titled there. Then you have Toxicity, which I have on vinyl as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, steal this album. Mesmerize, which has B B Y O B on there, which is the first uh, system album I ever liked, or a song I ever heard ever liked by them, which is B Y O B. So that was the song that brought me to them. And then, of course, Hypnotize there. So, yeah, a really cool, just five LP set that just kind of covers, you know, those five albums by them in a really quick, simple way. And, of course, in a. Uh, very cool, nice little package there too. So that's what's playing in the background. Um, drop the insert there. All right. And uh, so new CDs. Again, I've picked up a number of things over the past month or two, but these are just kind of some of the standout ones that I was really happy to get. Diana Crawl, and this is Quiet Nights. Uh, right now, probably my favorite jazz vocalist, and I've really been working on getting a complete discography of her work, and I'm really close, actually. All I need is Ragdoll, and then uh, the very best of, and then I have her complete catalog, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I really love Diana because she brings the, uh, what's the best way to put it? She takes the, the looseness of the pop world, you know, where there's... Little, you know, little expressions of kind of freedom, creativity, you could even say sexuality and all of that. You know, like sometimes you run kind of rampant in the, the pop world. But she kind of takes a small element of that and incorporates it in, in a jazz vocal world. And I think that's really something she brings to the table that a lot of jazz vocalists just can't compete with her on. Uh, if that makes any sense, those of you that know her probably know what I'm, trying to, what I'm kind of saying by that. But uh, this is Quiet Nights. And just you know, another great piece by her. So as soon as I get those other two, I'll be very happy that that's that's completed. Oh, and I'm sure you also notice I have the little uh, plastic coverings on this too. I decided to experiment with that, and I bought a hundred of them. It was only like nine dollars, I think. And um, 
you know, just see how I liked it, and I really do dig it. And it, it, so it's like, whenever I buy new CDs, I always keep a bunch of, so you can get those pretty cheap too, just brand new jewel cases. So I always put fresh jewel cases on all of my CDs that they anywhere near need it, if I can put it that way. So uh, I thought, let me try experiment with these sleeves because maybe it's worth that nine dollars for a hundred of them to protect, you know, the extra effort I put into putting new new jewel cases and everything with CDs. So I'm really digging it. And as you move forward, you're gonna start to see all my CDs protected like that. It's just kind of something different for uh, Mr. Hall of Fame's record exchange. So anyway, a few new finds here. The darkness found that for a dollar, so I had to pick that up. Actually, two dollars, I think. But, uh, you know, I believe in a thing called Love, a couple other really fun things to kind of listen to on that album. So that was a good pickup. Another group that I'm really starting, or I'm not really starting, actually starting to um, build up my complete discography on CD. I almost have it on vinyl, but building it up on CD is bad company. I just kind of realized the other day I have, like, no bad company CDs. Uh, they're not, like, the most expensive ones to find either. So anyway... Self-titled, I found for only a dollar, great condition. And then I've got this brand new copy of Desolation Angels for only three dollars, which was really nice. So two early additions to my Bad Company collection. I mean, I already have a Big Trouble and Holy Water. I think those were the two I already had. Yeah. So anyway, moving right along. Slayer, South of Heaven, that was a great addition. Whoa, another really nice addition too. I've had this CD for quite some time and have loved it, so it was nice to find this. I think I got it online for like $3.99. Um, Riot, Thundersteel, I mean, that's some classic, classic metal there from 1988. And another artist I've been really working on building up a collection on is Overkill. And I'm actually right there, too. I, I need two more Overkill CDs, which are Necro Shine and... Uh, what's the other one? I always forget how to pronounce the title of it. Oh, yeah, from the Underground and the Below. Those, those are the, the two Overkill CDs I still need. So I'm really close to completing that collection. And I recently picked up this one here, which is The Years of Decay which very quickly became one of my favorite Overkill albums. Um, I mean, the album itself is great, but especially pinpointing the songs, playing with Spiders slash Skull Crusher and Who Tends the Fire, and those two songs blew me away when I heard them. I was like, wow. So uh, this album shot way up on the list of my favorite Overkill albums, as well as The Electric Age. I also picked that one up. So when I finally get my hands on those other two that I mentioned, I'll do a video to kind of show my uh, complete Overkill collection. Great thrash metal band, too. I mean, if, if any band could turn the big four into the big five, it, it would be Overkill. So, so consistent over the years, even with whatever lineup changes they've had. Um, you know, you could take any, just the, the ACDC effect I always talk about. You know, you could take any song from any Overkill album and pretty much move it to another album and it won't seem out of place whatsoever. So a very solid band with just an incredible longevity going. Uh, Best of Marisi, another nice $3 find. Just kind of a greatest hits type thing. I got this one because it does have my favorite song by him, which is Every Day is Like Sunday. So it's a nice pickup. And then one other artist I'm working on complete discography with is my girl, Pat Benatar. I want all of her stuff on CD. I almost have it on vinyl, but I don't think some of the later stuff is actually pressed on vinyl, like Go and a few others. But uh, anyway, this is Get Nervous. And then I also got a copy of Precious Time. I love Pat Benatar covers just screams 80s to me, and I kind of love it. And so I think the only other, th I think three that I need by her is Tropica. That's one I'm having a hard time finding. I also need uh, Live from Earth and Go.
go. I think those are the three that I need by her to complete my Pat Benatar CD collection. So, anyway, that's just a few of the CDs I've recently purchased that are, you know, kind of the exciting ones to me that I wanted to share. And last but not least, just really quick, some other things I've been spinning. So let's kind of get back to vinyl here. One album that I spent a lot, matter of fact, I was just listening to this in my car this weekend, Love Inks. Love this album. Has that whole, you know, kind of new wave synth pop thing going and with that lovely female voice kind of floating over it. And I, I just love this album. I always find myself going back to it and stumbled across it by complete accident, which was awesome. But, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with this band, Leather Glove and Too Wild are the two songs I would say that will give you a great feel for uh, what Love Inc.'s about. Also spinning a little Soft Machine. This is Volume 2. Very talented band. When you look over their catalog, some stuff is psych, some stuff is just straightforward jazz and everything in between. So uh, it's a very, very talented band. But this is their Volume 2. Really, really cool stuff. Hadn't spun that in a while, so I gave it a gave it a twirl. David Bowie Low. Even though it's not my favorite Bowie album, it's definitely one I tend to go back to quite a lot. And of course, this has Sound and Vision on there, which is one of my favorite songs by Bowie. That's a very nice UK pressing that I bought up in Minnesota four years ago. And it's just amazing how you can remember where so many of these albums come, came from. Bon Iver. Again, just one I hadn't listened to in a while, and pulled it off the shelf, gave it a spin the other day. This is really cool, too, because I was actually in a music store a few weeks ago, and you know how they're you know playing music in the background or whatever, and I hear this stuff playing, and I, I recognize it's Depeche Mode, and I'm like, man, that's really good stuff, like, what? And so I go over there and look and realize it's this album I already have. So I came home and immediately pulled it out and started spinning it. But uh, Construction Time Again by Depeche Mode. Really, really great stuff. 1983, I believe. Um, yeah, and it's really awesome. I mean, you know, we gather a lot of music, and some albums just aren't necessarily your favorite. But uh, I only keep stuff that I like, so I know everything on my shelf has something on it that I really like. And sometimes you just kind of forget about them. You don't go back and spin them. So it's really cool in situations like that where you hear something, and then you come home, and then it's almost like you get to experience the album again for the first time. And it's like buying a new album without having to actually pay for it because it's just it's already there in your collection. So th that was that was really awesome, kind of uh, being reintroduced to this album again. It's really really great stuff. Kind of the same thing with the Clash. I was watching some TV show and they were talking about this, and you know my first thought was, yeah, I remember Rock the Cash Bar and should I stay or should I go? But I was like, wait a minute, what the heck else is on that album? So again, had to kind of go back and rediscover it, which is really neat. So I'm sure you guys out there know The Clash, Combat Rock. And another album I tend to go back to on a regular basis, Little Dragons. This is a total complete blind buy, or suggested blind buy, about a year or two ago. And I uh, had no idea what the band was. The guy in the store just said, this is someone you should check out. And uh, it really is a cool album, Ritual Union. It's one that I tend to go back to quite a bit, especially as background music. It it's a, has a very pleasing sound to it, the best way I can kind of describe it. Uh, yeah, so really, really good stuff. Make sure you check them out if you're not familiar with, with Little Dragon. So anyway, there you go, VC. Again, just what I've been spending in a few new recent finds. Again, Sid, Adam, thank you guys so much for the VCLT. Can I tell you how much I appreciate it? And uh, as always, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.